Good evening, everybody. And welcome back to St. Mark's as we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Ordinary Time. If this is your first time here, welcome. And if you are returning, welcome back. And of course, we always welcome those that are joining us this weekend on our live stream. If you have a kneeler in front of you, of course, that is your kneeler. If you don't, it's the kneeler directly behind your own seat. Masks are required while you're in the building, and we appreciate your cooperation for that. And instead of a passing of an offertory basket, the bin is in the back by the welcome desk, and we appreciate anything you can do to support our mission and our parish here at St. Mark's. And those participating online or via our live stream, you can send in your donation to St. Mark's Church at 1 South Road in Londonderry, New Hampshire. Or sign up for WeShare, which is on our website, stmarksnh.org. Click the WeShare button for your one-time or continual donation. And again, welcome as we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Ordinary Time. Please stand at this time. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. As we gather today for our liturgy celebrating our Lord's resurrection, we gather acknowledging our own sins and asking for the Lord's mercy. Lord Jesus, you show us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. You give us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. You lead us all to newness of life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world and mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive
Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Job. Job spoke, saying, Is not man's life on earth a drudgery? Are not his days those of hirelings? He is a slave who longs for the shade, a hireling who waits for his wages. So I have been assigned months of misery, and troubled nights have been allotted to me. If in bed I say, When shall I arise? Then the night drags on. I am filled with restlessness until the dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. They come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is like the wind. I shall not see happiness again. The word of the Lord. For he is gracious, it is fitting to praise him. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem, the dispersed of Israel he gathers. Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He tells the number of the stars. He calls each by name. Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. To his wisdom there is no limit. The Lord sustains the lowly. The wicked he cast to the ground. Praise the Lord who heals the broken hearted. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, this is no reason for me to boast, for an obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense, but if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my recompense? That when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all so as to win over as many as possible. To the weak, I became weak to win over the weak. I have become all things to all to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel so that I too may have a share in it. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her and she waited on them. When it was evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole crowd was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him and on finding him said, everyone is looking for you. He told them, let us go to the nearby villages that I may preach there also. For this purpose have I come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. I would say if you wanted a very uplifting message before bed tonight, pull out our first reading again of the first letter, uh, the, the reading from Job. His man's knife, life on earth a drudgery, are not his days those of hirelings. He is a slave who longs for the shade. In bed I say, when shall I arise? And the night drags on and I am filled with restlessness until dawn. My days are swifter than the weaver's shuttle. Remember that my life is like the wind. I shall not see happiness again. That's a really bad day. <laughs> Back in high school days, I remember hearing other kids talking about religion or talking about Christianity or our faith. And you'd hear over and over from many of these kids that it's like, oh, it's just for older people that just have miserable lives and it just gives them something to do. <laughs> now, for a kid who has everything, who, you know, the parents give them everything, food, they have their health, they have everything, it's kind of, I think, very difficult at that age sometimes to realize what religion is all about. Because if you ask a kid that age, you know, why do you believe in Jesus or why do you go to church? What's the answer usually? My parents make me. Now, later on in our life, I hope that if somebody asks each and every one of us, why do we still come to church? I hope that not, not one of us is like, well, mom in heaven would be very upset if I wasn't here. <laughs> or somebody is making me. No, we, through our lives and our experiences, hopefully we come to a realization of what faith in Jesus Christ is all about and we mature over and over and over again in our lives. In seminary, we studied a lot of philosophy. So for the first two years when you go into seminary, they just give you straight philosophy. And talk about what St. Job's or what Job says about life. That's what life is like at that time in the seminary because you're just completely bombarded with just philosophy, Aristotle, and then Immanuel Kant, and then Marx, Karl Marx, who really stuck out to me because he basically said that religion is the opium of the people. People just work day in and day out, and they just have kind of just their lives going on. They live in misery, and guess what? They have, at least they have something to kind of latch onto or entertain them with religion, because opium was just basically something to relax them and just make them distracted. Religion is nothing but the opium of the people. And equating that to present day or modern day, we would say, well, you know, if we're really so obsessed with celebrity or, or the sports we have, you know, the Super Bowl coming up in a couple of days, that's just a distraction. Is that truly a way of life that leads us to anything of any substance or any truth? 
And of course, I hope that we can all resoundingly say that no, our faith in Jesus Christ is not just an opium for each and every one of us or some kind of distraction. Through our lives, we realize full-heartedly what it is that it is about. Not just for a bunch of miserable people that just need something to hope in. No, that's not it. A couple of weeks ago, I was with Brandon Sargent, our parish evangelist, and he was filming some of the videos to prepare our kids for sacramental preparation. Because in March, we're going to be having a group of kids receiving their first reconciliation and then another group of kids receiving their first communion and their confirmation. And one of the questions in one of their prep things is, uh, why do you believe in Jesus? And so I'm on the film and Brandon's filming me and he says, Father Mike, why do you believe in Jesus? And I wasn't prepared for that question, even though I'm a priest. And I think if anybody asks any of us point blank, why do you believe? Is it the answer? Well, my parents told me to when I was just raised in it. And if that's an answer after I've been a priest for seven years, then you might want a new pastor. Um, (laughs) But I think that we can all reflect on that and why do we believe? Now, maybe some of us have, uh, you know, health issues in our lives and and we have clung to our our Lord in in prayer and, and asking us to carry, asking him to carry us through that. And as we look at suffering, even the suffering of Job and in all of our lives, suffering, yes, it is a part of each and every one of our lives. I don't care if you're a teenager or if you're an adult. Teenagers have suffering too. Adults have suffering too. And as I was discerning the priesthood, somebody taught me something really neat about celibacy. Because you can feel bad, well, I'm going to be alone my whole life and you know, I'm not going to have a spouse and, and all that. And somebody told me, you know, basically get over yourself, number one. And the job of a priest is really to connect with those that might not have a spouse, whose spouse might have passed away 30 years ago, who spends each and every night lonely as well. And it's your job to unite in your own weakness with their weakness. Exactly what St. Paul said in the second reading. He can only lead and draw people closer to Christianity if he in his own weakness can proclaim that. And I thought that was kind of a fascinating way. So each and every one of our own struggles you know, not to, not to say that they're not real, they are, but is there any way that we can unite, unite with somebody in our own lives that might be feeling the same thing or the same emotions? And of course, attaching it to the crucifixion of our Lord on the cross leading to resurrection. Now, that's a lot roundabout way of why do I believe in Jesus Christ? Why do I believe each and every day of what it is that I do? And I think it's just through salvation history and re- reflecting on the scriptures, realizing that it isn't just a fairy tale, that it is indeed real. But when the rubber hits the road, I can hopefully say resoundingly, well, I have a relationship with that guy. <laughs> you know, it isn't just something that I'm just hopeful in. It's a conversation, it's a relationship that we develop and we work on each and every day. And why would I be doing that if it wasn't real or if it wasn't true? I think that's kind of my realization of why do, is it that I believe in Jesus Christ? No, it's not because somebody told me. That's what formed me and helped me become formed. But because what is life about if it isn't real? What is life about if he didn't come for you and for me? What is life about if my suffering, if my own suffering that cannot unite myself to the people of God and unite myself to him? Because through this all, that promise of eternal life, it is indeed real. We've had family members, we've had friends that have gone before us, and we hope one day we will be with them, sure. But we believe full-heartedly that we will be with our God as well. That this is preparing us, life here is preparing us and purifying us to live eternal life with him. So yes, the sufferings of Job, it is real. Each and every one of us goes to bed some nights feeling the exact same things. But may we unite ourselves with each other to him, realizing that great promise he gives us that isn't a fairy tale, that is indeed the truth. And we stand together as one family in faith and we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. 
begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And in trust and confidence, we bring our prayers and petitions to our loving Father. That the church, the seed of the kingdom inaugurated by Christ, may be nourished by his grace to grow in unity and holiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That government and public health officials may be granted wisdom and strength in their efforts to manage the pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the good news of God's kingdom may give hope to all those in misery and despair. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this faith community may be blessed by the Spirit with love, joy, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially for John and Jody Harper, for whom this Mass is offered, May they be met by Christ in the fullness of God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers on our prayer line and for the prayers we now offer in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we ask all of these things through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Living by God's truth is holy and sure. God's presence is everlasting. God's truth is eternal. Bringing us justice, bringing God's justice to earth. Your words are spirit and life, O Lord, richer than gold, stronger than death. Your words are spirit and life, O Lord, life everlasting. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God through Christ. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven for us all. And so with the company of the angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, 
heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand that you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you. Sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Holy Spirit, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For when he was about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way on that same evening, he took the chalice, and once more giving you thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed upon us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son. And in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, with all of the bishops in your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, with St. Mark, and with all of the saints, and with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we pray together the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are they who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
touch you and be healed. Gather all your people and hold them to your heart. We remember how you loved us to your death. And still we celebrate for you are with us
count on one thing The same God never fails Will not fail me now Will not fail me now In the waiting The same God who's always there Is working all things out out yes I will lift you high in the lowest valley yes I will bless your name oh yes I will sing for joy when my heart is lonely all my days Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live, that made one in Christ we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And in just a few short weeks, uh, Ash Wednesday is going to be here before we know it. And yes, a mid-pandemic Lent is still going to happen. And we'll actually be here unlike last Lent when we were just abruptly shut down after I think the third week. So, um, but Ash Wednesday Mass uh, will be 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. as usual. And there will be the distribution of ashes. Uh, we will figure it out. I think the, um, the recommendation is that the... Uh, the verse that the priest says, unto dust, you remember that you are dust, and unto dust you shall return, would be said once. And then as people come up uh, individually, I believe I'm going to be using Q-tips this year, um, individual Q-tips for each and every person to not spread germs. It's either that or taking ashes and, and sprinkling them on top of your head. So it's one of those two, but I'm going to go with the on the forehead. So we will make it work for, for Ash Wednesday. So hopefully, again, you can join us. And of course, if you're still um, live streaming from home, we hope you can join us then. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And go forth, the Mass is ended. Have a very wonderful week, everyone. And God bless. Blessed are they who are poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of God. Bless us, O Lord, make us poor in spirit, bless us, O Lord, our God. We are the light of the world, may our light shine before all, that they may see the good that we do in give glory to God. Blessed are they who are meek and humble, they will inherit the earth. Bless us, O Lord, make us meek and humble, bless us, O Lord, our God. We are the light of the world.